And I, uh, Mike, do you want to say something before or right in the beginning here? Before hey, I, I will be glad to be the intro. And uh, I, like I said, I'm here to uh, to, to learn. Um, you, you never stop learning when it comes to the internet because it's moving so fast. So let me just go ahead and and, and uh, welcome everybody when you're ready to say go, and then and then you guys do your show and. Uh, then I'll join you at the end and, and give you my two cents if there's any two cents to offer. I'll take that two cents and let's let's do it. You got the recording going, Colin? Yes, sir. All right, Mike, we'll take it away. Let's get going here. Well, welcome everybody. My name is Mike Stewart, and I am so glad that you have come here to see the Extreme Makeover website edition from Mark and Colin. Uh, Mark and Colin are some of the good guys, as my good buddy and their good buddy Tom Antion says, there's a lot of people out there that you need to listen to, and Mark and Colin are the real deal. And I know they're the real deal because they've been hanging around somebody who's been one of my mentors for over 12 years, and that's Tom Antion. And if they do work for Tom Antion like they have shared with me they do, and I know the results that Tom's been getting, these guys are the real deal. You need to listen to them. Get out your pens and papers. I'm here tonight and organize you guys to get together as a student, not as a presenter. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that they're going to share all these uh, secrets and nuggets of wisdom to help you evaluate what's going on with your websites and make them matter, better. So uh, let's get to the, to the nuts and bolts of what's going on. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here. I'm going to mute my microphone, and I'm going to get out my notepads and start taking notes. And you guys take it away and share your wisdom. Thank you, Mike. Well, okay, everybody, welcome to Extreme Makeover, the website edition. Um, my name is Mark Bullard, along, and I'm on the line here with Colin Martin. And uh, let me just introduce myself really quickly. Uh, Mike is right. We work for and with Tom Antion. Uh, my main area of expertise is video production, YouTube, and video marketing. But um, I'm also a business partner with Colin, so that means I've learned all of the other nuts and bolts that make up an online business such as shopping carts, blogging, websites, which is what we're going to be covering today, and all the other little pieces that go hand-in-hand uh, -hand with, with an online business. I've been doing video stuff for over 14 years now, and I've been doing the web stuff with Tom for, wow, well, I guess four years or so. So um, I've, you know, I'm not uh, too much of a stranger uh, to, the, to the business side of things, and uh, that's really it for me um, as, as long as our Along with Colin, uh, we make up a pretty interesting team. I'm more of the techie nerd guy, and Colin is more of the, uh, I would guess, I would say social uh, expert and uh, copywriting guy. So we kind of cover both bases. Uh, he's a little bit country, and I'm a little bit rock and roll. So, Colin, what do you have to say about yourself? Oh, yeah, I appreciate that intro, Mark. I am a little bit rock and roll. I've been uh, working for Tom Antion for five and a half years. I'm his marketing manager, his right-hand man at Antion Associates. And uh, that uh, gives me very little XP whatsoever to be doing this webinar. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, actually, we, we go over uh, one of the first things that happens when people join Tom's uh, high-level mentor program is uh, they obviously have a website that needs fixing and critiquing. And we go in there and we uh, make changes and we suggest how to get better opt-ins, how to get more traffic, how to use keywords, everything that a high-level mentor program consists of. And uh, Tom and I are both one of those people. Uh, both of us tackle on that job. So I've been doing this a long time, and uh, I've run a n number of different Internet businesses as well, along with partnering with Mark. But uh, with Tom, you know, the mentees, it's a very important program that they're in. And we're going to show you tonight all the things that I've stood over Tom's shoulder and learned over the last five years. And it's a lot of stuff. And uh, we're just going to cover some really good stuff tonight, focusing on how to get more traffic. And when that traffic gets there, what happens? Are they converting? You know, nobody wants a little bit of traffic, and when they do, they want to see some kind of activity. So we're going to show you all this cool stuff tonight, looking at websites actually live on the call tonight. So we're going to, right out of the hat, pick some websites, and we're going to show you how we do it, Mark. That's right. We're going to cover uh, two broad areas. We're going to cover not only SEO and getting your site found by search engines, but we're also going to kind of cover uh, what your site needs to have in place so you're, the people that are visiting 
aren't just visitors, but they become customers. So we're going to cover both of those aspects there. So let's get started. Well, actually, before we get started, oh, Colin, we are going to give away a free product to one lucky attendee live on the line, and it's up to you to randomly pick that person out of a hat. So take a look at our attendees, close your eyes, and point your finger, and let's see who's going to win. That's right. This is the benefit of being on a call here. All right, ladies, what um, out there? Do anybody want to put up any extra benefits here to get this free ebook that we're giving away tonight? A powerful ebook that Mark just wrote. And I think I'm going to close my eyes here. I'm going to pick somebody, and it looks like Nina Smith. Nina, Nina Smith. Nina Smith. I hope she's actually Come listening, haven't fallen asleep yet. <laughs> but Nina Smith, I'm going to write that down right now. <clears throat> So Nina is our big, uh, Lawrence has said he's not cute enough. I understand that. Actually, you know, I wouldn't say that, Lawrence, but we're not going to talk about here that right now on the call. But uh, <laughs> Nina, you are the big winner, and Good that's going to work for me. Good job, Nina. Nina Smith. Good all job. right. So let's get now, on with our poll there, that. Marcus. Well, that's right. Uh, right before I launch this poll, I want to mention that just because you didn't win right now, we're going to do another free drawing uh, right before the Q&A. So you have to be on the line to win it, and uh, that will be coming up soon. So let's get going here. Uh, we're going to get started with a poll. Uh, we want to know where you guys are at with your website, and I want you to just answer this question. Are you happy with the amount of visitors to your website? Yes, no, or I could always use more. So we're going to throw this up here, and the poll is in progress. So please answer yes no or I could always use more and we're gonna let yeah, you could click right on those buttons right mark that's right you can click right on those buttons and um, I'm looking at the percentage of people that have voted so far it looks like about 66 70 percent of people have voted already and we will take a look at these answers right after uh, we close this poll up so any of you people that are calling from America I'm sure sure you're used to polls by now so <laughs> Uh, let's take one more, and uh, and this one. Don't worry, this one will not have as much uh, uh, commercials involved. All right, so we got about 77 percent of the people are have voted by now. 80 percent up to, and we're going to go for about 10 more seconds. So just quickly uh, choose one of the answers that best suits you, and uh, after that 10 seconds or so, we're going to close this poll up. All right, so let's just give it a little bit more. I'm going to give it about five more seconds. We got about 80, over 80 percent of the people have voted. Hurry up, everybody! You don't want to wow. be left out. And okay, the time is just about up. I'm going to close the poll in right now, and we'll take a look at the results. So here we go. Boom! Are you happy with the amount of visitors to your website? Only four percent said yes. And that's great. That must be me calling the mic. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> anyway, 43% said no, and 52%, uh, which is usually the, the, the majority of people that answer this poll, is that I, they could always use more, obviously. So we're going to help you do that, and hopefully at the end of this webinar, um, you will be uh, more, more of you will be in the yes category. Okay, so let's get going here. Well, if we could have only gotten 80% of the nation to vote in the election here last week. <laughs> yeah, right. So, of course, the biggie, and anybody who has a website that's trying to get search engine results always has heard the, the term keywords, and we're going to just cover what keywords are. Basically, it's when someone is searching for information on the web, they usually uh, visit a search engine and type in words describing what they're looking for. The search engine then checks its database and returns the results listing pages that meet the words submitted. Our goal is to have your website showing up closest to the number one spot of these results. Anything else you want to throw in here, Colin? You want to just keep on going? Keep on going. This is good information. Great. Great. Here's a little bit more uh, deeper into keywords. These words used by people searching can be called keywords or search terms. If you have done a search using search engines, you will know that a single word will generate results that are very broad and frequently irrelevant. To fine-tune your search, and this is what other people do as well, uh, you need to use a number of words or phrase. This often gives you a more relevant search result. So why are keywords important? Well, keywords are important, and they can be used successfully in conjunction 
with the search engines to provide you with a free source of targeted traffic to your website. And that word targeted is very important. They enable people who need your product, service, or information to find you. Appropriate keywords are like a telephone number for your business and the search engine is like the telephone book. It lists your name and number. So, keywords. List these words and phrases as they will form the basis for optimizing your web pages. The more specific your keywords, the better. Single word keywords will have a lot more competition for top ranking search results than phrases. So that's tip number one. You want to focus on keyword phrases uh, a little bit more often than just broad generalized keywords. Uh, this, you're, we're going for quality, not quantity. Even though everybody wants to get a lot of traffic, that's great, but if you're getting a lot of traffic and, it, and the people are searching for many different terms that result in this traffic, then th when they get to your site, they might not be too pleased with what they see. So w when people type in specific terms, there might not be as many people typing in these specific phrases, but the ones that do, when they find your site, they're going to be more pleased with the results of your website, and they can potentially become customers, and that's what we're going for. Kyle? Absolutely. And when people think of keywords, usually they only think of a few for their business. When literally each page of your website could have different keywords uh, that relate to the pages. And that's what we're going to look at tonight with this website critique. It's We're looking at different pages. A lot of people just optimize some keywords on their home page and the content. But we're going to look at what different pages of your site can use uh, keywords to directly relate to that page. The one thing we have to keep in mind is that a search engine result coming up in Google doesn't always isn't always your home page. It can be any page of your site. And if you don't optimize each page of your site properly, then your home page may be the only one that is so called uh, optimized. And you, you literally have dozens of other pages that will not come up in searches or people will come to them, the wrong people will come to them, and that will increase what we call a bounce rate, where people go to the website and go, wow, this isn't exactly what I was looking for, so I'm out of here. And if you have analytics or anything like Google Analytics, it's free, and you put it on your website, you'll notice a high bounce rate, and we're going to cure that tonight, showing you exactly how to optimize not just your home page with keywords, but where to put them and how to optimize each page so that the right people come and the right people convert. Yeah, and Colin, you, you brought up a good point. Uh, we already see in the question box that uh, Barbara was asking. She could use more traffic that, of people that stay longer. And that's uh, we're going to get into more detail on, on how, to, how to achieve that. But that's what you were talking about with the bounce rate. That's when people come to your site. And uh, basically, it's like a ball. When they hit your site, how quickly they bounce away and leave your site. And that's known as a bounce rate. And so uh, you want the bounce rate to... You want people to stay as long as they possibly can. That affects the bounce rate as well. So here's some keyword tools, and we're going to go into each one of these, and we will actually show in our live examples where these take place. But um, you, have to, you can place keywords on your website in specific spots that the search engines check and the search engines look, look at. Um, and if there's keywords there, then you already have a leg up as opposed to sites that don't have keywords. And these are in the title bars in image files, in H1 or otherwise known as heading tags, also in blog posts and pages, and anchor text, which is the clickable text in blog posts or pages or anywhere else on your site. Colin, anything else you want to say or want to get to the next slide? Well, I just want to say that these, a couple of these things, no matter how uh, awesome a website is getting traffic. There's plenty of other places to put keywords that a lot of people don't think about. Some secret places we're going to show you tonight, especially the image files. That's one thing that I almost never see. About 95% of websites don't optimize their images. Well, why would someone want to optimize an image real quick? Mark, it's about, it's another place in your source code of your website that you can put a keyword phrase. And not only that, you have to remember that Google images come up in searches. Whether you use the Google image search, or images come up in the main search, those pictures are attracted to the search engines by keywords embedded in the Google, in the image files. We're going to show you exactly how to do that and why you should do that. And if somebody clicks on a picture, it takes you right to your website. So you're missing traffic if you don't uh, optimize just the image files alone. We're just talking 
one thing out of here out of these five main places. So let's get showing exactly where we want to put these things at. Yeah, definitely. And I want to talk about those image files a little bit really quickly too. Um, like Colin said, there's people that search and it shows up in the Google image search and there's you might not do it but you can't always base your keywords on what you might do you have to try to think like the people that are searching for these terms and I know I look through images a lot and I have found websites that I've visited just through the image search alone so just because you might not do it I do it there's other people out there that do it as well and this also brings up another point you should have images on your website. You don't want the days of just having straight text and nothing else on your website are so 1997. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit old school and it can hurt you in the results. Okay, so now we have some web design elements. I'm sure uh, you you know, you might have talked to a web designer at some point that always says make a pretty site, blah blah blah, you need this, you need this and um, some of it's right and some of it's wrong. Um, but the web design elements that we focus on are simple navigation, which means when people visit your site, it's easy for them to get around. Um, prominent opt-in forms. Uh, it, hopefully you know what an opt-in form is, but if not, we will show you an example of a few and uh, why they're important. Contact information, copyright information on your website, videos, and then the personalized approach, which Colin is very good at explaining, and uh, he, he focuses on that a lot. Colin, what do you think? Yeah, let me go over just a few of these things here, straight up with all the experience that uh, I have in websites. Simple navigation. You should really have only about six or seven tabs of navigation at the top. Now, it's okay to have a drop-down menu from those. A lot of people are utilizing those. But uh, what I learned from Tom a long time ago, um, yeah, Wanda, this is uh, going to be recorded, so don't worry about that. What I learned a long time ago was is that Tom said the confused mind votes no. And when they come to a website and it's just too busy with navigation and clickable links all over the place, people, it's not choices that you're giving them. You're just confusing your visitor and they're, and they're going to bolt as soon as possible. An opt-in form, that's the main thing you really want unless your product is so fantastic that they're ready to whip out and buy right now, which they aren't. Usually, that's not usually the typical response when someone comes to a website. You do want to capture their email so that you can try to sell to them, not just that one product or service you have, but stuff over and over and over for years to come. So opt-ins, if they're not strong or they're not in a visible place, uh, they're going to not sign up. And you, that visitor comes and they leave and you've wasted a visit with these great keywords you may have on there. So just because you have good keywords doesn't mean anyone's converting. Contact information. A lot of people want to know about you or ask you questions or find out more about your expertise or read your bio or the About Me page. All these things are important in people building trust on a website before they make a conversion. Nobody wants to sign up or buy anything from a website where they don't know who the hell owns it or whether anybody is really there. So uh, contact information is very important to build trust. It's important. Copyright information. I saw a website tonight or this afternoon from somebody who's on this website tonight. Okay, I'm not going to name any names. But when I, I, it was a beautiful site. I scrolled down. The copyright said 1999. Okay, I didn't even know the Internet was around in 1999. I wasn't on it yet. <laughs> and uh, in a copyright, 1999. When Google sees that, when they, it, may, it may be an oversight art that you didn't update your copyright, but Google can tell that they can see those numbers, and they may not think, that that site has been updated or relevant. So whatever fresh content you're putting on there is going to waste. And of course, any visitor, which is the more important thing, sees a site that says 1999 on it, then it looks like everything on the site outdated. And nobody wants outdated information. That's why we're searching now for solutions to our problems, okay? Videos, we're not utilizing videos enough out there, you guys. We put a lot of these stock pictures and stuff like this and we don't spend any time. Video is not hard to do. It's very easy to do. It makes a personal connection between you and your website visitor. They get to see you. It builds trust. It's very important. But where on a website is the best place a video put a video? And we're going to show you that. And then, of course, the personalized approach. That's just writing decent, good copy that builds trust and curiosity and uh, responsibility on your website. People are not there to buy stuff. They don't come to your website to buy things, and that's a mistake. They're there because they're looking for a solution to a problem. That's it. 
once the solution to their problem has been satisfied, then they'll make a conversion such as signing up or buying something. And if your copy is just all about you and how great your product is and blah, 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 and it's nothing but fluff like a big brochure, nobody cares. And they're going to be gone. So personalized approach has a lot to do with website design elements, believe it or not, because you're writing all that text. So you have to keep in mind keywords, whether uh, and all that text, and balance it with personalized approach all at one time. And we're going to show you um, a few ideas of how we can do that, Mark. Yeah, um, I want to talk about the personalized approach really quick. Um, Colin always tells me this little nugget of wisdom. Um, you, you, like he said, you don't want to just fluff your own, you know, toot your own horn and talk about me, 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 me. You want to tell them, your visitors, how you can solve their problems. When you tell them that, it gets personal with them, and it's very easy for somebody to buy something when they connect personally with you. There's many other tricks, but that's the one that always sticks out in my mind. Colin taught me that. Okay, content. Here we go right here. This is more of Colin's alley. Uh, why is content important? Well, here's some great reasons. First off, it builds trust and credibility. It brings visitors back to your site, which is great. It decreases the bounce rate. Remember we talked about how long people stay on your site. You want a lower bounce rate. It decreases the bounce rate, and it breaks down sales resistance. And that's what I was saying. It's much easier for somebody to buy from you when they feel connected personally of some sort. Um, so, Colin, get into this stuff because this is good stuff. Yeah, all this stuff here is probably the most overlooked part of what, what I call the design elements of a website. So when we talk about design elements, especially for these critiques we're going to do for you tonight, we're not talking about whether the header's pretty or the graphics and colors and all these things. That's kind of a personal choice. There are uh, things about colors and things that make it but we're not, uh, more friendly to your visitor, but we're not going to dive into that tonight as much as we are looking at all the different uh, things that make a website fuzzy for people whether it's offering solutions to problems, whether they're sharing the content with everybody. All these elements here uh, create an interactivity. Now, I'm going to throw in here a very secret thing that a lot of people don't know right now, and, I've, and it's kind of new. And if, uh, We're going to get to it uh, into the next slide, but it's about sharing content and how important that is with uh, Google these days. Not so much that keywords are playing a huge part, but when somebody gets there, if they're interacting with your site, if they're staying there longer and they're sharing it with their friends, that will keep you higher in the search results. And uh, we have a slide next, I think, that explains that. Yep, let's take it. Uh, new rules of search. Uh, let's see. The new rules of search, uh, the search engines always change their algorithms around. around. So uh, the, back, in the, back in the 90s, before Colin even knew when the Internet was, it was uh, people would just jam keywords in their site and hopefully it would help them. But now uh, the algorithm is getting smarter. And it's paying attention to a couple factors, such as low content. It bans low content websites. It wants information. The more information and content your website has, the better the search engines look at it and see it. Uh, what kind of experience does the visitor have? Uh, that comes along with comments and sharing and stuff, and we'll get into a little bit more details on that in a minute. Uh, higher results for websites that people like. This is another social aspect, uh, and we will talk about specifics for that as well. And then Panda, which is, the I guess, the name of Google's uh, algorithm update, and uh, Colin likes talking about that one. So, uh, Colin, want to give us some details here? Well, the details, I do believe the next slide's got some specifics that I really want to get into here. I want to talk about how can Google tell people like Mark just told everybody that the new rule, rules of search are whether people are liking a website. Well, what the heck does that mean? I mean, I like websites all the time, but how does Google know that I like it or not? Well, Google knows. It's like he, Google's like Santa Claus. He knows everything, whether we've been good and bad and all this other stuff. Okay, just like Santa Claus, we Google can tell how often we come back to a site. They they log all that stuff with our IP addresses. We know when uh, Google knows when we return to a site, then, or if most people return to a site, then it must be good. If we're leaving comments on there, comments are extremely important. If you don't have a place to leave comments on your site, Google won't know that people are interacting with it. Also, all those share buttons. So many sites I've seen, 
even uh, a lot of the ones I peeked at from our registrants tonight, you know, that's what I do. You guys register and you have a domain name and I take a peek at your website and they're beautiful sites and with and you guys are beautiful people with a lot to teach the world, but you have no way to share your content. So we're going to sh uh, show you what a sharing plugin is for WordPress or some sharing buttons. When you start sharing with Twitter and Facebook, all that content, not only are people sharing your content for you and spreading you around the world like wildfire, Google can tell when people are clicking all those, especially the Google Plus button. And then, of course, Mark talked about stickiness, about people staying on the site longer. And that's what uh, one, of our uh, one of our attendees here questioned. They, she wanted people to stay longer. Well, how do they stay longer? There's a lot of different things that keep people on there. And that's always good for you to have people stay as long as possible on their site. But Google can tell the bounce rate. If you have a low bounce rate where people come in and out, it doesn't matter how much traffic you get or how good your keywords are, they're not going to put you high in the search results, period. So stickiness is very important. I'm going to show you some tips on how to keep people on your website longer, Mark. Yep, I'm sure uh, a couple people broke out in a cold sweat when you told them that we look at their websites when they register. I know there's a bunch of other ones on here that uh, are, are freely giving the, us their URL, and we are going to randomly pick some. Uh, we don't look at these ahead of time, other than the couple that we look at when people register, but we're going to take a couple of these, but uh, I'm sure some people are like, uh-oh, they looked at my site, and yeah, we look at a couple sites when, when you guys register, so we like to get an idea of what, well, you know, what, who we're dealing with and who we're talking to. Uh, but yeah, we're going to talk... We're we're gonna in our live examples. We're gonna show you how to, uh, you know, what you need to get return visits, comments, sharing, and how to make your site sticky. So here we go, Colin. Let's look at some real world examples. I know we have uh, people that have been uh, volunteering their site, and we are gonna pick some. Uh, if you want to throw your website into the mix, type it into the question box. Now we're not gonna do everybody's, but we are gonna just kind of randomly pick through here. Um, and I know that we do have one already lined up. Isn't that right, Colin? Yeah, I mean, somebody actually emailed me personally and asked uh, yesterday if we could do this. So we can take a look at that one, Mark, if you want. It, yeah. Sure. Uh, here it is. And you can watch on our screen. If you really want to, you can go to the website as well. But uh, you really don't need to because we are going to go right through it here. And I believe it's, I really don't know how to say this, Nanamo, Nanamo, I'm not sure, but it's nanamoelectrician.com. And here we go. We're going to show you basically what we look for when we are critiquing and looking how to improve websites. Uh, now, if you remember our slides, one of the things that we look for is we look at the uh, title bar. And the title bar is up at the top here. You can see my mouse up here. Uh, and when I hold my mouse over this tab, it actually shows the full title bar, which is Nanaimo Electric, oops, Electrician, uh, ER Electric, and Electrical Contractors, Nanaimo. I know that's a place, so they're going for local search, which is fine. That's great. Uh, and then also uh, these other terms here, the ER ele Electric and Electrical Contractors, those are some keywords in there. Uh, and this is one of the places that you really should put keywords in because the search engine spiders, or the robots, some people call them, uh, when they are searching all over the web to see if your website fits whatever Joe Schmo typed into the search box, they start from the top down. And the title bar is the one of the topmost parts of your web page. So the search engine spiders are going to look there first. So if they find keywords in there, uh, I really don't know exactly what happens in Google, but I'm sure a little, either a little bell goes off or something. It's a ding, ding, ding. This is related to what the person is looking for. So if you don't have keywords in the title bar, well, you already, you know, you already strike one against you for that. So uh, make sure that you have keywords in the title bar, and you can have, as this person has done, you can have more than one. And it's suggested by us that you should have more than one, but they should be all related. Um, Colin, you want to jump in here? You want to take turns? or? Yeah, well, uh, the first thing that I see when I come to this site instantly is I see an opt-in box that says, sign up here. For what? What am I signing up for? Um, you have to explain to people what they're going to get, um, whether they're signing up for to be on a database, whether they're going to be on a newsletter, whether they're going to get uh, some kind of discount coupon, which would have been a great uh, thing to put on here. Um, this this contractor here, if they do commercial or residential work, 
could have offered some kind of referral program or anything. Whatever you want to give away is, is fine with me, but you have to explain to everybody what it is or no one will sign up. I can probably guarantee no one has signed up because no one really signs up with a sign up here like a, a demand, you know. Uh, people have to be enticed to give their email these days. And uh, that's very important um, because people get a lot of email and it's just uh, no one's going to sign up for stuff anymore. So um, that's the first thing I see. And uh, we, let's take a look at the, the home page. I think the title bars had some decent keywords in it. But let's take a look at the, some of the other pages and see if uh, any keywords are in there. Yeah, and before we do that, I thank you everybody for helping me with the pronunciation. Nanaimo, Nanaimo. Uh, yes, uh, and I, if you're going for local traffic, I like the fact that you have the name of the location in the URL. Uh, I think that mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't hurt you. So uh, let's take a look at the other pages, like Colin said. So we're looking at our services. Here we go, our services. And I'm willing to bet that our services is probably the, the header. The heading, H1 tag, um, which uh, usually when you have H1 tags, it's also good to put keywords in. So our services is kind of generic. You might want to throw in a couple keywords. Even our electrical services or our you know certified electrical services, something you know you have to do the keyword research. But throw some keywords in the H1 tag. Um, and but this also could be. I'd have to look at the source code to check. Uh, but this sentence. These are just a few of the many services ER Electric provides. A little bit better um, if this is the H1 tag, uh, but if not, then our services usually is it, and uh, there, no, there isn't any keywords in here. Um, oh, and also remember, we were going to point out what an opt-in form is. Colin just talked about it. Opt-in is right here, and yes, he's absolutely right. Nobody has any idea what they're going to get if they sign up. It just says sign up, and so you might lose some people they might not want to put their email in here because they have no idea what they're going to get. And on top of that, we like to have an opt-in where once they sign up, they get a freebie. It could be a free report, a free book, a free audio recording, a free video a link to a video on a video page, something, uh, some sort of incentive to get them to put their email in. Well, if you scroll down a little bit, Mark, you'll see that they are giving away a $25 off their next service call. But they're making yeah, me click out, and I don't even sure where it's clicking out to. But uh, that would have been better with the email, so that they would have been building a customer database of people that they can talk to all the time. So, um, is that where, right, where it Tom. went when people clicked out? This is yeah. This is where it went, and you get received twenty five off your next call. But it looks like it takes you right to like a sales page because there's a buy now button. So I don't know if the opt-in has anything to do with that or not. Um, yeah, well, you don't want to uh, punish your visitors by giving them 25% off if they buy right now. You'll get a lot more people in the funnel, so to speak, if you can offer a coupon that they can maybe use at another time when they're maybe they're not ready right now to spend. So you want to get an email from them and maybe issue a coupon with an autoresponder or something after they sign up, or just take them to a page where they can uh, print off a coupon that maybe they can come back in a week or two and uh, if they're not ready to buy right now. So if you force people to buy right, right now to use a coupon, um, you could dr drive traffic away from people who aren't ready to buy at the moment. So um, that may have been in a better, uh, that verbiage, 25% off your next service call might have been better in the opt-in. On this page, Mark, are the title bars got keywords in them? Show people where you can see the title, uh, the title bars. It's in the tab totally. up there. Yeah. Yes. I, I'm holding my mouse over, and when I hold my mouse over, the actual full amount of text is shown. And it is Electrical Safety Audit ER Maintenance Services. So, um, I, you know, it does have some keywords, Electrical Safety Audit. I don't know. I, I'm not in the electrical field, so I don't know what ER of ER maintenance stands for. Um, I would maybe spell it out completely, but again, I'm not in the, the this field, so maybe it has maybe it's some technical speak that I'm not. I'm guessing it's maybe electrical renovation, maybe. 
Well, that's the thing. We got to you, you want to be careful of when you're doing your keyword research that you're not using insider jargon or anything like that. Uh, you have to look at the cert, what people really search for. You have to do your um, you have to do your keyword research and see the real monthly results of what people search for. Now, if I wanted, if I needed residential electric, I would probably uh, type in basically um, electrician Virginia Beach. So they, you know, they have a lot of uh, the local thing going on here that gives them some advantage. But uh, the keywords aren't super strong if they're going to be uh, stuff that you don't know. Mark, if you don't know what it means, most people don't know, probably doesn't know what it means either. So um, yeah. that doesn't that doesn't apply so much to this business as that I, as I see other uh, businesses like life coaches and things that use a lot of this um, insider jargon and stuff and not and not aware of what real phrases that people type in. Right. So let's go back. You wanted to see some other pages. So I'm going to take it back to the R services page. Uh, and this is where we are. Now we can see down at the bottom there's a copyright. It doesn't have a copyright date, but it also doesn't have an incorrect copyright date. So you're not really hurting yourself, not really helping yourself either. It's kind of it's very safe, and that's fine. That's great. Um, there's a lot of links here that uh, do have some keywords, hot tubs and spas, standby generator, installation, generator installation, security and landscape planning. So the clickable links, these are the anchor texts that we were talking about, these clickable links that take you to other pages. Um, this is a good thing. This is great. But uh, yeah, again, the H1, if, it's, if this is the H1, I'd have to look in the code. But uh, it says our services. If it just had some keywords in there, even generically our electrical services, it would give you a little bit more search engine juice. A little bit more Let's look at the testimonial right. page really quick because for service-oriented uh, neighborhood places, the test uh, other customers' testimonials are very important. Okay, here we go. Those are okay that they've put up uh, um, good testimonials. They're a little long, so you could have actually fit more testimonials on there by shortening it up. People aren't going to read all that, so you don't want them to skim over things. You really want to make a point, so you want to try to keep the testimonial a little bit shorter. If you had any opportunity, uh, and, and this is something you guys want to do from here on out, is if you have a decent customer, no matter what you're doing, whether you're a consultant or an electrician or a plumber or anything, try to get a video of them or at least snap a picture of them with their kid or whatever and put put some uh, pictures of these people on here. It makes the testimonial look real. I learned from Mike years ago that uh, putting a video testimonial up here is the most powerful thing. And Sometimes um, if you're carrying around a little pocket camera or a pocket video camera or, or your uh, iPad, <laughs> you're, you're able to grab some video of a customer and say, hey, would you uh, mind giving me a testimonial really quick, just, you know, 10 or 20 seconds. And that's huge as opposed to uh, text, the base testimonials, which either can be faked or people just don't really read them anymore. So it'd be kind of a new thing for you to um, put some video testimonials on there and start concentrating on collecting those if you don't have them already. Let's take a look at another yeah, site real quick, Mark, while we have a chance, unless you have another something you want to say. Oh. I just, I just two more points I wanted to talk about this site. Yes, I, I wanted to go uh, talk. I said you had a good point about throwing some pictures in there. That also, like Colin said, it adds to the person personability of it. Uh, people connect with other people, so a face with the testimonials is great. But one thing that I want to show you is on the home page I noticed uh, earlier was um, I'm scrolling down, and I see a couple things where uh, text is underlined but it's not clickable. Now, in the internet world, usually anything underlined means it's clickable. So when I first saw this, I thought either the link is, either it's a link and it's broken or it never was a link. So right now I'm, I'm confused, and if I'm confused, another person might be confused. And I only think I only noticed this on the home page, but I did notice it a couple times. Um, bold is fine, but underlined, unless it's clickable, underlined can be very confusing. And even right here, give us a call. Usually, actually, even on some of these other pages, give us a call was clickable, but in this case, on this home page, it's not. So um, that's that's just a, a, navig a navigation thing, and it's very confusing. So stay away from underlining text unless 
it is a clickable link, and if it is a clickable link, it automatically is underlined, so you don't even have to underline it. So um, that's one of the things that I noticed on the home page that kind of bothered me. But yeah, Colin, let's take a look at another site. Um, are we going to pick one out from the question box here? Or, or yeah, we let's see. Uh, let's see who offered one. FamilyWealthAdvisory.com, Scott. We can try that. Family Wealth Advisor. And real quick, Mike, Mark is finding that site. Uh, we had a couple of questions here. Um, uh, Kimby says, "Could you give them a coupon for a testimonial?" Heck yeah, you can. You can sort of bribe for testimonials. That's, there's nothing wrong. However, you get one is fine. And uh, someone else asked. Is the flash, those flash graphics where that uh, picture was flashing, you know, going back and forth, that's not too bad, but I've seen flash graphics, you know, headers uh, that flash on and off with all these uh, crazy, they look cute, but it can confuse the search engines. And it's just a lot of code for them to sift through um, before they find the keyword phrases and stuff like that in your meta uh, information. So you really want to avoid flash graphics. It, uh, as much as you can and just go for standard JPEG headers because it really helps your search positioning. Yes, I was going to say the same thing. I like flash graphics personally because I'm kind of a graphics person, but no, they're terrible for the search engine. So don't use flash graphics if you're hoping to uh, rank in the search engines. So here we are, familywealthadvisory.com. The first thing I look at is the title bar, and it's NICE, Family Wealth Management, Dash, Marlton, Cherry Hill, Southern New Jersey, Philadelphia Financial Planning Advisor. Wow, there's keywords in there. Great. Yeah, geographic qualifier keywords, too. That's great. What that and big fancy word for uh, place names that people search for. But let me, when I just, I like this site. Um, I'm looking at it right now, and it's the first time I've ever seen it, and immediately, I'm going to pick out a few things that I really love about it. First off is the opt-in box is excellent, okay? There's uh, what I like about the opt-in box is, first off, there's a big blue arrow pointing to where you're supposed to sign up. That's always nice. There's a picture of Marty there, which makes it personable, like you're going to get to talk to him instead of some robot or some secretary. And I like the headline, protect yourself, your family, and your future. Those are three things that I care most about. So really now I don't care. He's really hitting the pain points, and that's really good for a headline for an opt-in. He's telling me uh, what I'm going to get. Enter your name and email, and you'll instantly receive. I love instant. That means I don't have to wait six weeks. A free video and checklist to help you choose the right financial advisor. Very good. All that's fantastic done. And it, one thing I like about the opt-in is it's, in a very prominent spot, what we call not just above the fold there, which is a you know in the same area that when you first get to a website, it's just like uh, above the fold is anything you don't have to scroll down to see, but it's actually in the header area, which is really the highest converting place to put an opt-in, and uh, just um, there's a lot of links on the right hand side there that can be a little bit confusing only because the actual navigation links are so tiny and so small up at the top that if you scroll just a hair down, you won't even find them again. So I would have suggested maybe moving those navigation to right there where Mark's pointing below the opt-in but before all the content. That way it stays in, in view more. The navigation is to things that are very specific, the information people are looking for more so than just latest articles and things that they don't know they don't need yet, you know. Um, I like how he's just got the six, uh, like we, you know, the six pieces of navigation, so it's not too cluttered, but there's a million things in the drop-down, um, which can be a little confusing, but it's not confusing when you first look at it. But those navigation links are so small, I would never see those up there. And I don't know where I'd go instantly. There's just so many choices. And over on the left-hand side where it says, click here to learn more about why you can feel confident making the decision to work with us. It's an entire clickable link. You want to try to avoid that many keywords in your anchor text because uh, it's just diluting any real keywords that you would put um, uh, as a clickable link. Google can see 
the keywords in a clickable link. It sees all the words. It stands out to them. And the click here to learn more about isn't really, there's no keywords in any of that. So we could have probably uh, made financial advisory and wealth management firm or something like that with real keywords in it, the clickable link instead. So I'm also glad to see that there's a video. That's a very well done. And uh, so, Mark, what do you think about this one? Yeah, um, I when I first looked at it, which is right now, I first looked at it, I thought, wow, they did a great job, especially like Colin was saying, above the fold. Now, above the fold is anything that when you load up a website, you don't have to scroll. If you scroll, whatever shows up once you scroll, that's below the fold. So this is prime, prime real estate, and there's a ton of good information on here. Uh, really good point with the little links. Yes, I would put them underneath the opt-in um, and maybe make them a little bit larger. Um, and, and then the links on the right-hand side, there are some good things in here. I like, there's a ton of information on here for one thing. So you have a ton of content, which search engines love. Um, I was looking at some of the keywords again in some of these clickable links. Some of them are okay. I see Social Security and Medi Medicare, that's great. Are you listening? Nah, not so much. That doesn't really have too many keyword-specific terms related to uh, you know, family wealth. Um, but I saw one here, Whitney Houston's funeral suggests trouble for estate. Well, that is, in my opinion, that is fantastic because what they're doing is they are riding on the, not the coattails, but they're using current trends that w that's happening around the world and relating it to this business. Now, that is fantastic because I'm sure at the time this article came out, it was right around Whitney Houston's death, and uh, that was a hot search item, and they came up, uh, I'm sure, in search results and how it was related for her state. So it, it's, it's using a hot trend that people were searching and uh, relating it to this business. So that's a great, great, uh, not trick, but it's a great uh, thing to do, and anybody can do it if they can figure out how to relate it to what's being searched for, uh, like in the hot news. Um, Go ahead and click the video, Mark. Oh, the video here? Yeah, just go ahead and click that video. Do you know how large corporations have a chief financial officer that manages their financial affairs? It's a nice 48-second video. exactly what we do for you. We work with our client's personal CFO to oversee and Okay, I've seen enough. Um, so it was a nice 48 second video. Yeah, it's always nice to have a little video like that, and, and it helps keep that stickiness we were talking about. That's 48 seconds that somebody would stay on their website more than just bouncing on and off. If they watch the video, they actually have a chance to stay. And 48 seconds is a long time, guys, because most people stay on a website for about seven seconds. And uh, the video, I, the only thing I would suggest about it is that since Marty's got his picture up there, and I'm already signing up to meet him. I want to meet him more in the video instead of that stock footage of people that actually don't work there. Um, it's kind of like, again, a brochure. Um, now, that's okay, I guess, but it would convert far higher, and I would get so much more out of this if I got to meet him and he talked to me, and I could judge him by his honesty and, and the look on his face and his intelligence level and everything in a simple video. So 48 seconds, sure, I watched it and I stayed on longer, but it probably didn't do as much for me as if I got to meet him personally. So um, I was already not really wanting to watch the rest of it because I already knew what it was going to be about, and uh, so I wasn't um, thrilled with the rest of that video. So that's something that he could have done better. Uh, I just randomly clicked on an article and um, just taking a look at it for the first time right now. And I really like that there is a, a ton of social options so you can share this article with other people. It looks like there's a ton of information, which is another great thing. Um, there's also share buttons up at the top. Very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing that's a little odd, not odd, but one thing that I would do to improve it is I would have some links in this article, internal linking that takes you to other pages on the site. There isn't a single clickable link in this whole article. Um, of course, there is, you know, in the tags and everything, but I mean the actual body, the content of the article. You want to put some clickable links that go to other pages of your website. Um, that's known as internal linking, and of course, you can put keywords in the anchor text, the clickable part of the link. Um, that's, so that's one thing that just stood out right from scrolling through here really quick. Yeah, good, good um, observation, Mark. Obviously, 
when people are reading an article, if they're going to read, they typically don't read one this long. So that's one thing. But in this specific sense with financial planning, maybe they do. Um, but when they get to the bottom of the article, there should be a clickable link to some other kind of conversion, like back to the sign-up box, a dedicated sign-up box, uh, a financial blueprint that he might be selling or giving away. If I read to the bottom, I have to scroll all the way to the top to get back to anywhere else inside the site. So it's a little inconvenient, but the share buttons are great. And remember, we talked about Google knows when people are sharing your content. It's extremely important to this new panda and penguin stuff that, we've, that you've been hearing about. If, you, if people aren't sharing your content, Google thinks that it stinks. Okay, period. So um, sharing is the sign that website visitors like the content. And remember what Google can tell what people like, and they're going to put that in the search results. We didn't see the sharing buttons over on the electric site. And what if I was at the electric site and I happened to think that Joe down the street or might, um, might need these services or I just wanted to share uh, to help my local businesses out. There wasn't a way for me to share this content. I would have to, to call people on the phone and go, um, go visit this website that I can't pronounce. You know, that's just, you know, it's not easy for people to share. So the share buttons are really important, and they did a good job on this one. Yeah, two more things I'd like to point out is another great job of having the opt-in. It looks like the opt-in is on every page. It's over here on the right-hand sidebar, uh, which points to me, which tells me that it's probably on every single article that you guys have, which is fantastic because sometimes, you know, there's tire kickers out there. They want to read a couple articles. Or the search engines might link to a specific article and not the home page. So there's a lot of times when people will search, they click a link to go to a specific article and not your home page. So if you only have the opt-in on the home page, you, you're losing them, uh, possibly their, their, connect, their uh, information. So this is great that he has this probably on every page. Um, but one thing I would probably throw in here is a picture or two. Um, again, the pictures are searchable. It breaks the text up a little bit and um, it, you know, makes it look nice. So I would probably throw in a picture or two as well. And it can be stock photos. Um, if that's all you have, that's fine. But uh, you know, a picture or two would be great. I also want to point out. Call the, yeah, hey, Mike. Well, I, I, I'm loving everything. I'm watching. I'm listening. I'm taking notes. But I wanted to point out some a couple of things here that I definitely want everybody to know. Both of these examples were WordPress, and that's something I think is so powerful for the, what you guys are teaching is that automates a lot of this stuff. So. Um, um, like I said, I, I'd love to share with you a new customer of mine. I want you to take about three or four minutes to show you something that really needs a lot of help. And then I want you to do, because I want to teach here to, to my folks, you know, what we've looked at is two good examples with some tweaking. But this is a brand new customer of mine. And go to ceramictileservices.net. And they're not on the call tonight, but I want to show you what you don't do. Look at, look at their title tag. Homepage. Homepage. <laughs> That's more common, okay. Mike, than you. You'll have no idea how common that is. It's just crazy. It is, no, folks, it is so ridiculously common, and then people wonder why they're never found. Okay? Uh, especially for local businesses. I'll give you five seconds to find their phone number. <laughs> Oh, here it is. <laughs> I'm too old to read that small anymore, though. That's the problem. <laughs> and when was the last time you got a book with orange paper and orange text? Mm -hmm. yeah. No video, no nothing. I mean, and in fact, a lot of the stuff I inherently do when I'm consulting and working with customers, uh, but I'm picking up a whole lot of other things here. So I, I just wanted to, just to at least give you a contrast. Now let's go back to some real folks on the call here. But I'm just telling you, th this is a very successful company here in Georgia. Wonders why they don't get any leads for their business. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, quite apparent. <laughs> that color scheme, you can't read it. It's just, mm, it's, yeah, not too good. Well, we're glad Mike is helping them with this. <laughs> Glad they got a professional right. on their side. 
Anyway, uh, and, and one of the things that I, I find so many businesses, no YouTube channel, no Google Analytics, none of the free services from Google they've implemented in any of their websites. So everybody, take away this. Implement all the free Google services in your websites so that you know what's going on. And um, uh, that's one of the things that, that uh, I just want to at least have documented here that I'm a big proponent and hope you guys would agree as well. All right. Back to listening. All right, we're going to visit like maybe we got time for maybe one more uh, of your guys' sites out here. So let's pick another one. Let's see here. See Mark, oh, what do you but, the communication well, leader dot com. All right. Overall, family okay. wealth management. Good job with content. Looks good. What did you say? Com yeah. Communication what? The no, communication leader dot com. This is going to be good. <laughs> I love it. Why are you laughing? Oh, I don't this know. Let's. I want to take a. Easy video. Yeah, I'm going to take a look. Okay, so the title tag is just the communication leader. Mm-hmm. That's one strike. It's, it's. It's got one phrase. I mean, you could always add more. Let's see here. There's the opt-in. It actually says you do get a free gift. Not not terrible. I don't know what's what's going on with this link here. Maybe that's and then it cuts off. So that's just a little odd navigation wise. Maybe that's, that's okay. With... That's okay. You definitely want to point out. Uh, often, you know, we have these sites and we put them together and we're working on them, and um, you have to go back and double check that some of the graphics may not fit inside these WordPress themes. Um, that's very common that you just can't stick a graph, any graphic you want in the sidebar. It's got to be measured out perfectly or it'll, it'll break through the template. And a lot of people just throw them in and, and don't really know how to fix them and they leave them. And then, and that, that unattractiveness right there it could be some information that we're missing out on. So you don't want to cheat your audience out of half a graphic or half a link to something. Um, not sure why the video is not really planned, but, uh, Look, scroll down a little bit. Oh, there he is. The good old Lawrence Clark. Yep. Hey, Lawrence. See, now I do love that. Look how personable that is. He's all dressed up. He's smiling. He's saying, hey, everybody. That's a cool video. I like that. But see the uh, picture mark on the uh, left hand or the right hand side of Lawrence? Mm -hmm. What? Uh, let's show people about image files. We were talking about them. And let's show people what we mean by an image file. Okay, so if you want to test the image files on your site, and this is what we do when we look at other people's sites, I'm actually going to pretend like I'm going to save this file to my computer. Um, I'm on a Mac, so it might be a little bit different than for you guys, but basically you right-click, and I'm going to choose Save Link, and it's going to bring up a box that asks me uh, what I want to name the file. So this is the file that it originally is, orange-j-clark-w-books-2012. Now, if this is another place that you can put keywords in the file name. Um, this one so, at least has his name. Yeah, that's not too bad, but most people have their name for files, or th sometimes they're just a n random number that comes out of your digital camera. Like it'll say 300-42.jpg or something like that. What you want to do to hide keywords in a file name, especially on WordPress or any other site, is when you out, download them out of your digital camera or wherever you got this file from, while they're sitting on your desktop and your computer, rename them with keywords. So this is about communication skills. So I would have put communication skills dot JPEG. Just I would have saved this file as communication skills and then uploaded it to my WordPress with that file name in it. Now the file name is in the source code of WordPress. If you can see the source code of any WordPress site. Um, I don't know if you can view source code on here, but you can in a PC. Um, but uh, yeah, this here, you don't have to freak out or anything. Nobody, you don't have to know any of this stuff, okay? This is what's called the source code, and it's what builds a website. It's got all the file names, it's got all this stuff in here. Um, but this is what Google sees, okay? It doesn't see a picture of you, and it doesn't see 
and it doesn't read that kind of stuff. It actually goes through this source code is where Google reads for information. And anytime you upload pictures like a JPEG or anything else, and save it to your site with keywords in it. The keywords are inside the source code, and the, your visitor will never see it half the time, but Google will. So it's another important place to put keywords, a secret place that most people don't put. I mean, literally 95% of people don't put keywords in the file names. See right there, Mark just pointed it out, that that was a place where if it had the words uh, communication skills or communication uh, skills training, leadership training, public speaking skills, anything, that would have been seen by Google and not necessarily by your visitor. So that's a secret place to hide keywords in here. And um, I would even suggest, uh, Lawrence, that he takes, uh, he uploads a new picture in that same spot with brand new keywords in it and try to optimize this thing as best as possible. Yeah, but Lawrence, you did some good. You did some good stuff. I mean, like Colin said, it's nice to see you in the video. It's nice to see your face again next to your contact info. Which there's a sharing button. Yeah. Good job with the sharing buttons. And uh, down at the also, bottom, we got what we call social proof, where you can see that it was tweeted three times and liked 26 times on Facebook and shared on LinkedIn. What that tells me is that I'm not the only person who's ever been to this site. So when I first come to this site, um, I know that other people have been here, and Google knows that, and I know that as a visitor. It's called social proof, and it means that uh, I'm not the only one. I don't. Nobody wants to be the only one to go to a website. They don't want to be the first one to be here and then look around like they're in a dark room and go, "Hello, is anyone else in here?" You know, this is proof that other people have been here and liked it. So instantly, I have a positive affirmation about the site before I'd even read it. And then when I watch the video, there's another positive affirmation that he's so personable and I like him. I get a chance to like him. Those two things, my friends, beyond getting search traffic, are the two biggest things to the success of a website, is people feeling good about the site and people finding a solution to their problems. That's the two things that are most important. And, uh, and Lawrence does a good job on that, believe it or not. You know, it doesn't matter whether a broken graphic or, you know, uh, you know, the keywords aren't perfect or anything like that. He can work on that. He can put keywords in his pictures. He can change his title bars and stuff like this. But the whole personality is, is, a, is a good success indicator. I also like in his opt-in box, um, it says sign up now. Most of them just say join or submit. And with most email programs like AWeber or One Shopping Cart or anything like that, you can actually go into the code and change what the submit button says. So to put a little call to action like, yes, give me the my gift or sign up now or yes, please or something like that is really cool. And uh, he did a good job on that. It's just a little tweak. I think I showed him that anyway. But uh, that's not a bad site really. There's Everyone's got little tweaks that we can do. And that's the whole point of what we're doing here tonight with Mark and I. Yeah, good job, Mark. It's not too bad. Um, oh, okay, Colin. So uh, you, you said that that's probably about all the time we have right now. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, if you want one real quick, but um, we didn't want to keep people too long, um, let's go ahead and... Well, we do have... We do have the Q&A that we still have to do, so we have a bunch of questions that we can answer for you guys. So, yeah, be um, sure to stick to the Q&A, but right now I think we're going to go back to the poll. Yeah, we're going to go to the poll, and don't forget, we are also going to give away a free product again, so sit tight, but hopefully you guys uh, now, do you know more ways to get visitors to your website? Here's the poll. Could you please answer, uh, answer honestly? Uh, let us know. Do you know more ways to get visitors to your site after this. And there are a ton more ways that we just couldn't get into, but hopefully you know like, at least a good handful of uh, ways to get some more visitors to your site. And have the search engines find you as well. Yeah, Mark pointed out one of the biggest ways is just those title bar areas. And the title bar is very simple place um, in WordPress. It's in your SEO, all-in-one SEO pack, so these SEO plugins that you have have an opportunity for you to write what's called a title for every post and page of your site. And those are the ones that show up where Mark was pointing out earlier when he was holding his mouse over the tab that shows the great keywords up there. And that is 
Tom, Tom Anteon told me that that's probably 80% of where the search engines look for your most important keywords and that each page should have those titles or those title bar areas optimized for the content of that page. So that's a lot of work right there. Anytime Tom says 80% of something, then that's something that we should be listening to. So right there, that can, that can improve your search engine results, getting you a ton of traffic, plus also looking at all the different, uh, um, I look at what's called Google AdWords. They have a keyword suggestion tool. And you can put in any kind of keyword, such as leadership skills, and see a hundred different uh, results um, related keywords that you can use on your website to keep gra grabbing more traffic. So if it wasn't clear enough with Mark pointing it out to you, now do you know more ways to get visitors to your website? Select yes or no. And uh, we just got like five seconds left on the voting to get it in. Three, two, one. All right, I'm going to close the poll and uh, let's take a look at the results here. It looks wow. like uh, the majority at least know ways to get, uh, you know, more ways to get visitors to their site. Absolutely, so, that's great. So it looks like we, uh, we at least we did a good did job, Mark. Right? Yeah. Um, but it's a good thing, you know, we're right? still employed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, we're not done yet. We're going to give away our freebie. Um, that's right. Up just a minute or two, uh, and then we're going to open the floor live to Q and A and answer all of your questions. So um, let's before we get to that freebie, let's just cover what you guys really need to know. You, uh, and we covered a lot of these in the these quick critiques that we just did. Um, you need to know the best sharing plugins, uh, and most of these are WordPress users that we're talking about. So plugins that are free to use to to share your pages and posts. Uh, how to fix small mistakes that can get you banned from the search engines. We, we only cover white hat techniques. We never cover anything that's questionable. We, are, we never suggest anything that's going to get you banned. Uh, also, navigation, how to keep your visitor from getting lost. And that's more than just having menus up at the top of your site. That has to do with anchor text and, and a lot of other links as well. Uh, copywriting tips, this is right up Collins Alley. Uh, copywriting tips that make people love you and buy from you. Um, we pointed out a couple with the, you know, showing your face, showing some pictures, testimonials. Also, what keywords are best for your business? You want, really want to focus on that because the search engines are looking for keywords. Well, um, you guys are some of the lucky ones because what we are doing is we are going to give you a personalized and professional website critique from us, yours truly, the guys on the line, uh, right now. Uh, basically, we're going to offer that to you. And our offer is a personalized 30-minute website critique for your site. It's screen capture video, and we go through every single page of your website, and we go into more detail than what we just did tonight. Uh, and you get the video to watch over and over again. Uh, basically, it's like watching over our shoulder as we go step by step through your website and point out everything, more than what we did tonight, uh, that you should change on your website or fix. Uh, you will get immediate results and benefits as we show you exactly what needs to be made. You get to hear our wonderful voices again, and we make, again, these are person, personal to you. Uh, and then you can take this video, it's free, it's not free, but you can use it as much as you want to watch it or send to your webmaster to make the changes, or you can follow the steps to make the changes yourself. And that's what we're offering. We're going to get a free 30-minute, excuse me, not free, but you're going to get a 30-minute website critique from us. Uh, you also get a customized spreadsheet, the best keywords for your business, just in case you weren't sure. And we will give you some monthly search numbers as well. So that's what you're going to get with your website critique from us. But that's not all, of course. We always like to throw in some bonuses. And we're going to throw in Tommy Antion's MP3 recording of 60 website tips in 60 minutes. This is, brand, this is free with our critique. You also get a webinar recording, creating info products for free. Um, and what's nice about this bonus is when you know how to create info products for free, you can use these as freebies for when people opt in. You can add these as bonuses to your own products. You can sell them outright. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff with these info products. And as we, this recording tells you, and it's also by Colin and myself, how to create these for free. Uh, the third bonus is you get another webinar recording, and that's press release magic. And a lot of people don't use press releases to their advantage, but you can use press releases to to announce a lot of things, not only a product that you came out with, but 
thoughts, any changes on your website, anything new that's going on with you, any webinar that you have coming up. Um, this webinar recording is over an hour long and it talks about how to use these press releases to announce to the world and to get traffic. Press releases do get you traffic to your website. On top of that, you get my book, the YouTube Marketing Handbook. It tells you how to use all the features in YouTube as well as how to use them to market your business. So you get all of these bonuses with our personalized website critique from Colin and myself. And you can see that it's $167 in bonuses alone. Uh, but again, you get all of those when you get our website critique. So let's take a look at one of the testimonials that we have from uh, one of our happy customers, Colin and Mark. Uh, this is her sister's website, and the critique was fantastic. GoDaddy designed her site, and she was pissed. They charged her so much and did not give her what she wanted. We, us, you guys, had great suggestions. We are now revamping and coming up with a new plan and what we are going to do. You are the best. Thank you so much. Warm regards, Rhonda. So we helped Rhonda out with a website critique, and she was more than pleased with what we told her. And we have more testimonials that uh, go right along the lines of these with our website critiques. Anyway, you can get all of this, all of the bonuses, and our 30-minute video website critique for your own website, every single page on your site for $97. You can get it at expertwebwriting.com forward slash Mike. That's Mike with a little lowercase m. Or you can also pay 50 now and pay 50 the next month and still get all of the bonuses and the website critique. Um, now really, uh, we also have a guarantee that if anybody's site is absolutely perfect, we will give you your money back. We don't just, you know, we won't hem and haw and keep your money even though you have a perfect website. But really, we feel that most of the websites, and you can kind of see from some of the examples, most of the websites have a good amount of changes that could be done to perfect their site and uh, be found with the search engines and or uh, build personality with your potential customers. So for $97, you get our website critique, all four of those bonuses, and uh, peace of mind that you know that your website is optimized for the search engines as well as optimized for potential customers. So feel free to, feel free to think about it. Feel free to throw some questions in the question box, uh, and feel free to check out expertwebwriting.com forward slash Mike. That's where you can purchase all of this. But right now, we're going to give away our free product, and we're going to then open up the floor to the Q&A. So, Colin, while I'm closing my eyes and pointing out who is going to get the next free product, which, again, is my Easy Web Video eBook, over 100 pages of video production tips and secrets on how to cheaply and effectively make while you're looking videos. Why don't you uh, tell us a about the product anymore, anything else you want to throw in there on our critique? Yep. They, uh, if you saw these critiques we were giving the people, and some of them were only like five or ten minutes because we didn't have time to get to too many tonight. We didn't want to uh, just go over one site for half an hour, but that's what you're going to get. Half an hour, 30 minutes plus of, me, of Mark and I going through your site page by page, link by link, making sure that everything is absolutely uh, top-notch. And not only are we going to point out exactly what's wrong with everything, uh, we're not going to be that negative, we're actually going to show you how to fix it. On the, uh, on the critiques that we do, we usually go into WordPress dashboard and show you little shortcuts about how to go in and actually make these changes. Mike was talking earlier about the sites that we've been looking at were on WordPress. That makes it even easier because it's easier for you to go in and make these changes yourself. That's the great thing about WordPress. But sometimes you don't know exactly what to change until we show you. But 30 minutes plus all those bonuses, it's a fantastic opportunity to get real-world, uh, experienced Internet marketing, a second set of eyes on your site to tie up all the loose ends to make it their site the best it can be, to breathe new life into it, to get new traffic. And if you're not going to do it, uh, get this from train, uh, this kind of training from us. You need to get it somewhere because it's extremely important that you're offering your services to as many people as possible and converting the people that get there. You owe it to your visitors. Each one of you has uh, an experience. It, you guys have a discipline that the world needs, and you're cheating people if not enough people are getting there. And they need they need you. They need your help. So this is a good thing for you to do. You get this training anywhere you can. 
But obviously, you want to get it from us because we're the best at what we do, and I don't know anybody else out there doing this stuff. No one's critiquing websites like this. So this is actually a, a very uh, rare opportunity tonight to do this with us. You get all these bonuses. You get uh, a 30-minute critique. And you get to answer. You can ask me questions. You can email me at any time. I'll help you fix this site. I'm just not going to point stuff out and leave you hanging. I want you to be able to fix this stuff. So this is a great um, – I'm also going to offer a small bonus here at the end that we haven't even talked about, but uh, we definitely um, want to get you on the ball here to fixing your website to be the best it can be. That's expertwebwriting.com forward slash Mike, M-I-K-E, little Mike there. You know, don't go to just expert web writing. That's it. Put in the forward slash Mike or you'll buy something else. And it doesn't bother me any, but you're not going to be getting the critique. So uh, we also have a 50 and 50 easy payment plan. Uh, it's 50 now and 50 in another 30 days. In case you don't have a whole lot of money right now, you want to take advantage of that or get your feet wet. Mark, let's give away that prize, buddy. Yeah, I already picked a winner. Um, I, it's uh, Well, it says Greg WMS. I'm hoping that's either Greg Williams or um, maybe his last name is Greg. Uh, anyway, Greg, uh, congrats. You won uh, a free copy of Easy Web Video. It's my book. Easy Web Video, video production for online businesses right here. Uh, you get that completely free. Uh, so we will be emailing you uh, an ebook version of that. So congrats, Greg. Um, cool. And if it, hopefully it is Williams. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> saying it is. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank All you, right. Greg. All right. All right. Let's get booming over to the uh, Q&A here, guys. Yeah, we do have a lot of questions here, a lot of good questions, and we're not going to leave anybody hanging. So uh, let's take it away. Let's get some questions answered. Let's go to the next slide. So we have the... Uh... Oh, hold on a second. We oh, wait a minute. Bonus. What is this? Oh, those for those who order in the next 30. 30 minutes, okay, which is probably about the length of this Q&A if, if people are into it. We have a seven-day free trial to the Great Internet Marketing Membership site. That's Tom's high-level mentor program. Tom Antion's high-level mentor program comes with a training site that only the people who pay the $9,000 to work with Tom personally have access to. But since I'm, gonna, um, since I'm the one that uh, is in control of that site, Tom doesn't know this, so please don't tell him or I'll be fired. I'm going to offer a seven-day free trial where you can get in there and listen to 300 MP3s, 200 audio recordings and videos and articles, and you can save a lot of those stuff a lot of, right out of the site. And uh, that's going to come with your bonuses tonight. Also, this is also a thing I'm throwing in here real quick for the Q&A. If you guys get the critique from us tonight, I'm going to go over the content and copywriting of some of your website, too. I'm an expert copywriter, high conversion copywriter. I write all of Tom's sales letters and a lot of Tom's content. I bet you didn't know that. But I'm going to point out a few things on your site that I think uh, content-wise will make people fall in love with you and buy from you. And that's an extra bonus that I don't just do for anybody. I just do it for the mentees and of some other high-paying clients. I'm going to throw that in. Um, I'm going to write it out and send it with your critique tonight if you jump on that. But we're going to go ahead and get to our Q&A. So pop the slide back up with our, uh, with our address to the sales letter where you can get the 97 or the... Uh, 50 and 50 over at expertwebwriting.com forward slash Mike. And we got a lot of questions here, Mark. And we're, me and Mark and I are really good at this, so uh, we're going to whip right through this stuff. This Q&A, you want to stick around for it a little bit because people learn more from this Q&A than most the entire webinar combined on other webinars. So let's take a look at what we got here, Mark. Oh, yeah, um, let's take a look at some of these. Also, I just want to say that when you guys purchase please send us your website because there are sometimes people will buy it and they won't give us a website. So, uh, Can't critique it without the website. Website. website, yep. That's right. So we definitely need to know the URL. And, uh, and uh, thank you already. Uh, Greg already said uh, he's going to purchase our service. So thank you, Greg, and enjoy the free gift that we're going to give to you. But uh, let's see. Uh, Julia was asking how long is this offer good for. This offer is uh, – 
good to go. You, the only thing that you won't get is the seven-day free trial to Tommy Ampion's uh, training site after this half hour is up. But you will get all the other bonuses as well as the critique if you want to take advantage of this later on. It's no problem. So any of you people that are designing a site right now and you think you might want to do this once your site is done or even just a landing page or sales page, our services will still be here. So uh, you can either buy now and then take advantage of it later or just buy later. So um, that's totally up to you. Okay, so let's see here. We have a bunch of questions. Uh, what if the site, Jill Carson was asking, what if the site is in Joomla? Um, we can still critique it. Uh, we, the only thing is we won't really be able to give you any plug-in suggestions, but we still will be able to critique all the major SEO options, the sharing options, and the content and copywriting from Colin. So don't worry about if your site is in Joomla or if it is a straight up HTML, okay? Um, but we just won't be able to recommend plugins if it's HTML or Joomla. We, we will recommend plugins if it's WordPress, okay? Um, I got a question from Frank that says, are some pages best to put a nofollow um, code in there or should all pages be followed by the search engine spiders? I can't think, Mark, of too many situations, and Mike could even pop in here if he knows of one, of why I'd put a do not follow tag on there. Uh, hidden pages that deliver um, thank you confirmations or freebies. When someone opts into your site for a free ebook and then they hit the submit button and a hidden page of your site will pop up and says, thanks for, sub thanks for signing up, here's your free ebook. Those are pages that you don't want to engine spiders to find. Uh, any kind of hidden pages that deliver stuff that is only specific password encrypted stuff, things like that. But regular navigation, where where a regular visitor could come in and go to articles, video sites, about me pages, anything like that, anything you're linking to, all need to be indexed, each and every one, by Google. Uh, yep, good answer. Uh, Greg had a question, are keywords separated by commas in the title bar? or do you have to be concerned with having too many keywords in the title bar? Uh, well, you don't want to seem spammy in anywhere that's related to keywords. You don't want to be jamming a ton of keywords in. Um, I like to keep it, you know, one to four keyword phrases uh, is usually a good limit. Um, and we don't usually separate them with commas. We usually separate them either with dashes or those uh, vertical straight up and down lines. Uh, that's usually how we do it. I don't really, uh, we don't really recommend commas. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but uh, we really don't see it in any sites that we've ever critiqued. We don't see it in, full, in the ones that are fully optimized and really good, and we don't see it in the ones that are absolutely bad. So I would stay steer clear of the commas. Julia says, and she's making a comment here about the, the ceramic tile site. She says the first paragraph tells who they are, not what they will do for me. Well, that's really cool with content. Julia, you must have been uh, listening to my Stealth Persuasion uh, seminar or something because, yeah, the first thing people need to know when they come to a site is in what every visitor, and this is a secret, another secret tip out there that you guys need to remember, people are not coming there to learn about you. They're coming there with a what is it, what's in it for me attitude. They are searching for a solution to a problem. You need to offer that in your content. Uh, be the first thing that comes by, what is in it for the visitor. They don't care who you are yet. They'll, they'll worry about that later, you know. Once your problem has been solved, then they start to build the trust. So that was a good comment, Julia. Uh, uh, Colin and Mark, I, I, I got to tell you a quick little story. I, I just uh, met that, that client, which is real near where I live here, because uh, I am consulting a lot of local businesses. And, you know, when I saw their site, they, they realized that they needed some help. And the first question I ask somebody when they're new, and you need to think about this, is I don't say what you want your website to look like, because what it looks like is not going to make them money. What's, what's going to happen is, is if they're telling what's in it for a customer, I mean, we all know that from, from the information. And you'll be interested, I learn something every time I interview these people, I say, what makes you money? And they said bullnose tiles. Now, have you ever heard of a bullnose tile? Not me. No. Okay. Well, there's a tremendous amount of searches on the internet for bullnose tiles, and they're one of the few places in the in the southeast that makes bullnose tiles. So, uh, obviously, their title tag is going to have bullnose tile in it, and uh, more importantly, 
we, uh, I'm a big fan of building lead generation sites uh, uh, because one of the things I went to the WordPress uh, meetup, the, Nat, the worldwide one in San Francisco, and Google came and spoke at that Word, uh, WordPress camp. And they said the, the title, you're calling it title bar, title tags, whatever you want it, that thing that you kept, you know, that's, that's built into WordPress is the number one uh, recipe for, for findability, the number two recipe, uh, recipe that they said on the stage, title bar, number two is keywords in a domain name. They look at that. So we bought that company, Ceramic Tile Services, we bought bullnose, uh, bullnose tile fabricators because that's the three words they want to get found for, and that domain name was available. So we're going to build a whole website about them fabricating tiles in the bullnose. The third thing they said at Google that was important is keywords on the pages. So in other words, if, if your keywords are in the text of your pages and your, your domain name and your title bar all have those keywords in it, that's what they're looking for. And then the fourth piece that they were, uh, were excited about, not excited about, but saying that is a recipe for findability is incoming links from high-ranking sites, especially the social media sites. So I, I, I do this with all my customers now, and we've been getting incredible results. And of course, you know, I forgot about the pictures, I forgot about the H1 tag. I mean, you guys taught me a lot tonight that, you know, you just can't remember everything, and you're, you're right, that you've got to pay attention to all these little cross your T's and dot your I's if you want to outrun everybody else. And so it's a great webinar, guys. Thanks. Marty saying that uh, he was, we were talking about his, how he doesn't have that video on there uh, of himself. He's saying, what about the new scribe videos where there's like a live hand drawing? Wants to know if those kinds of videos are still engaging. Well, they're cute and I guess they're sort of engaging. But Marty, listen, nothing is more engaging than you. You're the expert. You're the reason why I'm there or you should be the reason why I want to do business with you. So any video where you're talking directly to me, like we saw in Lawrence's uh, uh, website, that is the highest engaging and highest converting video. So please put yourself out there. Um, I don't want to do business with, uh, with a, a stock photo. You know, I want to do business with you. And that will raise you heads above the rest of your competition because uh, most people aren't doing that. They're scared of video or they don't understand it. You know, Mike and Mark there are video experts. We got all the tools to help you with that. Mark's book tonight that you'll get in 20 minutes, guys, uh, you'll get an extra book there. Um, we can teach you how to make these videos that are engaging. So um, you always want to put yourself out there. And remember, we only got 19 minutes left, so start order. Remember that I'm not going to leave you hanging things. We're not just going to show you stuff and leave you hanging. We're not going to leave you alone. You're never going to be alone in this. You can email us, Mark and I, basically for the lifetime of this product, you know, which is you have in the video, you're showing it to people. We're going to answer every question. If you don't understand something in the critique, just email me and I'll get right back with you. I'm very famous for getting right back to people and answering all my emails, so I'm here for you guys. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we didn't put it in the slide, but there is unlimited email uh, support, so you can always contact us via email, too. So don't think that we're just going to leave you in the dark after we give you that critique. Uh, another question that I have is uh, from Kimby asking, could you give uh, people a coupon for a testimonial? Absolutely. Any, anything that you can do to get a testimonial, uh, do it. Anything free, any coupon, if you want to give them a testimonial in exchange, uh, it's a good idea. Testimonials, again, are fantastic because they're showing other visitors that real people will go to the site or real people are using your services. And again, a picture also can add a lot to that too. So coupons, free report, free if you want to give them free services, whatever your services are, anything for a testimonial, it's a good idea. Let's see here. We got some more questions going on. Uh, keywords of the video tags too, uh, Christine, Charlene was asking. Yep, yep. Um, you, and, and you can, it can be as simple as a YouTube video. You don't have to use a, a dedicated video service like Easy Video Player. Uh, you can, no problem with that. But uh, if you simply have a video up on YouTube and then embed it on your site, uh, that can uh, that help add to the stickiness when people sit on there and watch it. That helps. 
I have a question from Charlene. She says, do you use the same keywords on different pages or related terms focused on the main homepage keywords? Well, your home, your homepage keywords are basically your broadest ones about your business. Let's take, for instance, public speaking. Now, public speaking has three major uh, keyword phrases that would be on a homepage, such as public speaking, presentation skills, and uh, like communication uh, training or communication skills or executive training or seminar presentations or something like that. Those are very broad. When you start moving to the other pages, such as your services, want it to take what that content about what you're teaching and use some of those what we call long tail keywords or my, my word nichified keywords phrases so if you're a public speaker and you have services a page that says services where you're teaching then you can start using words like seminar training services public speaking training uh, whatever it is that the content is on that site those title bar keywords should directly relate to that. You don't want to just have repeat the same broad keywords over on each page, but try to relate them. Uh, they are related to your home page or your main keywords, but they're specific to each page. So look at each page of your site, and I'll point that out in the critiques and give you my suggestions for what keywords you should use for different pages of your site, depending on the content is there. The more precise the title bar keywords are, relating to the content on the page, the higher the search results and the higher and more effectively indexed that page will be. So uh, it's, it's kind of an exact science, but there's also a lot of testing, but I will definitely give you a lot of recommendations on that as well. And Frank said, uh, are keywords in the meta tags useful anymore to the search engines? Well, Frank, I'm glad you're still on the line because I know you asked that about half an hour ago. So uh, about an hour ago, you actually asked that. Uh, the meta tags, the keyword, meta keywords aren't really as important as the meta title or the title bar itself. They don't really pay much attention to the keyword, the meta keywords as much as they used to. So you don't have to concentrate on that. It's mainly the title bar and the keywords, as Mike said, right on the page itself are the most important. The ones that your visitors will see and the ones that Google sees and also things like the anchor text and the images. And we also had a question about if putting keywords in the image files is too much spamming, and Mark answered that, but I want to uh, privately to her, but I want to I want to tell everybody that no, not really. Uh, keywords are only spamming if it looks so ridiculously uh, overstuffed on your web content itself, on your text. Some people will repeat the word leadership skills 95 times just in two or three paragraphs on their website, and if it looks obvious that you've repeated it too many times at first glance, then you're definitely, it's going to look obvious to the search engines. But what you want to do with your image files is actually pick some extra keyword phrases that you haven't yet used, and it's a good place to pop in extra ones that may or may not make immediate sense to the page. I know that's a little confusing, but don't worry about uh, spamming Google unless you're deliberately trying to do that. Most people don't write like that. You want to write natural. You want to write for your audience. You really don't want to write for the search engines. You only want to have a small percentage of keywords and keyword phrases. And there's so many keywords, literally hundreds to choose from in your industry that uh, if you get the critique tonight, you've got 14 minutes left to get that. If you get the critique, I'm gonna, we're going to send you a spreadsheet of 100 suggestions based on your industry that you probably... I believe, I know for a fact you haven't used them all yet. And those are some that you can use in your image files and you won't have to worry about spamming. Mark? Yeah, good point on the, on the spamming thing there. Don't worry about uh, like what Colin said. Um, I'm going through, uh, I just want to say thanks to George for purchasing. Thanks to Glenn for purchasing. Uh, thank you, Greg. Enjoy that that free book you just won as well. Uh, Scott, uh, thank you. I hope you found the, the Buy Now button. I think you did. Thank you, Scott. Uh, please keep throwing those questions in there. We're going to stay on the line until we get them all. I'm, I'm looking through all the other questions, and I'm not seeing any that we haven't answered yet. If we haven't answered any, throw them back in there. Uh, a couple of people are asking, is this going to be recorded? Yep, you will get the recording uh, within 24 hours, so be on the lookout for that. Um, another thing I'd like to mention, if anybody out there likes the webinar and they would like to do a webinar with us, we're available um, to your list, to your website. 
uh, but just throwing that out there. Um, let's see here. We've only got 12 minutes left to get that seven-day access, full access to Tom's mentor training site, the one I'm not supposed to be giving away. So if you tell him, I'm going to have to come after you with my big, powerful robot thing that will shoot you like in RoboCop, and because uh, I'll know who did it, <clears throat> but don't tell him. All right, but you only got 12 minutes to get that bonus and the extra bonus of me critiquing your content. I'm very busy. I work full-time for Tom. I've got lots of personal clients. I want to make sure that uh, people who order in the next 12 minutes will get that content critique from me, and you'll, you'll love it. And uh, I just uh, want to let everybody know that, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to stay here until all the questions are asked, and you want to make sure that uh, you do this. You invest in yourself. This is extremely important, not just for you and you making money, but for the people that trust you and are depending on you. I always tell the story about my kid. He just moved out. You know, I was a single dad, and he moved out uh, in August on his own, and he doesn't ask me for advice anymore. He searches for stuff on the Internet, and the, the answers to, to all his problems he searches on the internet because he's, you know, 19 years old. And that's what they do. Well, I want to make sure that the websites, first off, that he can find the relevant ones that help him. And when he gets there, he gets real advice because he's not going to listen to me. And I want to make sure that each one of us out there, we have a duty to create good content, trust, trusting websites that people can easily find and people can easily benefit from. So it's not just an investment in yourself. It's an investment in everyone out there. So... It's real important that we uh, do this critique, and you won't be sorry. This is actually a really fantastic opportunity to work with us tonight, so it's great. And we've got a couple more questions here, some good ones. Elizabeth wants to know, should she wait a few weeks before having the critique? Uh, she's still working on the site? Absolutely. Um, if you want to get all the bonuses and the seven-day trial, I would suggest uh, purchasing now. But it never expires. You know, you can come back to us and we'll do the critique when you're ready. Um, or you can wait and, and buy it later, but uh, it might be easier if you have it all lined up right now. Um, also, you know, we, if you're in the middle of building it, we could take a peek and, and catch things before you get completely finished. Um, also, uh, Wall had the, I hope it's Wall, uh, had, the, had the same question. If, we, if they invest now, can they delay the website critique and also the seven-day window to the membership site? Yes, you can, um, and you will get the bonuses immediately. So if you want to take advantage of the bonuses but wait for the website critique, I would suggest ordering now. Uh, but yes, you can you can wait. It doesn't really expire. Uh, and like Colin said earlier, uh, it, it, I, 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 we've been doing this for a while. The website critiques, and I, I about ninety nine point eight percent of the websites have more than one thing that they could improve immensely on. So if you're not going to get this from us, get it from somebody. Uh, get it from somebody.